I'm Jeff Lampert. I'm from the Privacy and Scalings Explorations team in the Ethereum Foundation. And uh, I'm going to talk today about Interrep, which is a project we've been working on. It's um, in the identity space. Uh, so, a brief introduction to what we do. Uh, it's, there's lots of projects in the uh, trying to bring identity into Ethereum. Um, and they tend to be uh, like uh, have some identity source and, and build it up from, from the ground. Our approach is a pragmatic approach uh, where we uh, build on the identity that we already have in our digital, uh, in, uh, our digital lives. Um, and we bring that across to Ethereum so we can have an established pool of uh, or established identity uh, pool, and we, we can integrate that into our Ethereum applications. Um, so yeah, very much a pragmatic approach, building on the identity sources we already have. Uh, so what we aim to do is build a bridge from existing digital identity sources to Ethereum, uh, integrate with providers of those identity sources, um, and then privacy is very important to us. So uh, we build on the Semaphore uh, framework and uh, integrate with, with that. So those building blocks all come together to form the basis of an application. Um, so identity. Um, we sp spent a lot of time in our social networks uh, um, some people more than others, but you know, people spend a lot of time on their Twitter accounts and building up, um, putting out a, a bit of our personality in, into those accounts. Uh, so we spend, you know, every tweet you, you write is a bit of humanity that goes into that tweet that represents you. Um, and we build those up in, in our social our social network accounts. Um, and people, some people spend a lot of time on that kind of thing. Even if you're not into social, social networks big time, we still have digital identity in the, in the non-Web3 world. We have things like government IDs and driver's licenses and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's our, our real world human identity is reflected in those digital sources. Uh, so that's what we try and build on. But we need to recognize that uh, those digital sources also uh, are vulnerable to civil attacks. Um, so we need to yeah, filter out the bots and kick them out. Um, so they're the kinds of things we're trying to do with Interrep. Now, um, let's take a look at what the Interrep Lego block looks like in an application. Uh, we have, we have uh, everything rooted in the blockchain. Interrep is the Lego block on top of that that provides the identity, uh, the identity module. Um, and the Lego block on top of that is Semaphore. And your application hooks into Semaphore. Uh, and with all of that, we get the, um, the identity layer in Interrep. We get the privacy layer in Semaphore. And we get the blockchain sort of, um, providing all the, all the guarantees. Um, Interrep will integrate with those identity sources, like our social social media accounts and those kinds of things. Now, Semaphore relies on the idea of groups. Um, you form, form pre-existing groups and the Semaphore application will uh, use those identities in those groups to uh, verify the, the kinds of things that your application is doing. 
So Semaphore is, is a privacy layer. So those groups, the group membership is guaranteed, but never revealed. It's never re revealed what the underlying Ethereum account is. So, um, yeah, so we'll talk a bit more about the, de the details of that a bit later, but that's an idea of what your application stack is. Um, it's, yeah, it's really just a bunch of Lego bri bricks all plugged together. Uh, the kinds of identity providers we've been linking with so far are these examples, Twitter and Reddit and GitHub. Um, so what we'll do is a, an OAuth uh, verification on your Twitter account, for instance, um, and using that, we'll link it with an Ethereum account and uh, never reveal that link, but we, we maintain that, that link, that Twitter handle is always reflected in that, in that Ethereum account. Uh, and it's easy to, for us to add new, new providers. It's really just, it's an OAuth verification and some rules about, um, you know, what's a qualified account or what, does it look like a bot, does it not? Does it look like a human? Um, we can also integrate with other providers. Uh, we could use email as, a, as a, an identity source. And this uh, is useful in some cases, not in others. Maybe it's not so useful for Gmail accounts, but even Gmail has some barriers to entry. So, but if you've got like a .edu account, email account, then that's a fairly good guarantee that there's a human behind that account and, and a reasonably good guarantee of uniqueness. So we can use those kinds of sources and uh, integrate with those. Uh, government authorities are good in that, um, you know, the government makes sure you only have one driver's license, for instance, uh, and there's, there's, there's a strong guarantee that there's a human behind that driver's license. So if we can, we can integrate with those kinds of sources, and it also includes the people who don't use social media. Um, so that's another approach we have. Um, we can do things like curating groups of, uh, of um, users so that might rely on personal knowledge of, of, uh, of the individuals involved. So that's, that's also a strong way to guarantee humanity. Um, other ID projects, we can integrate with those and we can integrate with on-chain sources like uh, use things like NFT ownership, that kind of thing. Now, a bit about Semaphore. So with those identity sources, we create a group. We put someone into a group. Um, now, Semaphore relies on these groups. Uh, Semaphore groups are uh, membership sets, so um, there are guarantees of, uh, you know, once you're in that set, you're, you're expected to be, you know, Anyone can expect that uh, that identity to be to have a human behind it. Um, so, and with Semaphore, it's a generic framework um, in which members in that membership set can signal on a topic, and that apply that can be applied in multiple ways. But an easy to grasp example would be a DAO that has votes on proposals. Um, in that situation, a signal is a vote and the topic is a proposal. And Semaphore will guarantee that, that anyone who votes is a member of that group and they can only vote once. Uh, and all of that is, is uh, is done with privacy. So you don't know who is voting on a particular, uh, voting in a particular direction. Um, so it can support secret votes, uh, but it still maintains strong guarantees of, 
um, membership in that set. Uh, so this, yeah, the semaphore framework gets used in lots of ways, but uh, the group membership part of semaphore, semaphore, plain vanilla semaphore has its own group management, but what we do with Interrep is it, semaphore outsources the group management to Interrep. And then that's, that's, um, Interrep itself is, is basing its identity groups on, for instance, on Twitter membership and GitHub membership and so on. So um, the way that works is users will, uh, will prove their membership on that, in that social network uh, uh, identity source. Um, each, so that will form a Twitter group, but we subdivide that into tiers, uh, which basically represent a, a level of confidence that there is a human behind that, behind that ID. And as we know, uh, Twitter is riddled with uh, bots. Um, so we will just apply rules to filter out those bots as best we can. Uh, we won't, we're not gonna say it's perfect, but we'll get pretty close. Uh, good enough for most applications. Um, the way we do that, for instance, with Twitter, is we'll have a, we have some criteria that we apply ourselves. Um, with Twitter, it's a, a fairly high bar to get in gold status. Uh, you'd need 7,000 followers. Um, with 2,000 followers, you'd be silver. With less than that, you'd be uh, bronze. But uh, we also link to Botometer, and that will do an assessment of your Twitter account. And for most people, that's gonna, that's, that's gonna give us a score on how much Botometer uh, uh, how confident they are that you are not a bot. Um, so most people with a bit of history in their Twitter account and a few followers will be able to get in silver or gold just using that bot botometer score. Uh, you, can, you can try, um, you can join a group and, and on our website and um, assess your own um, status there and see if you can get into one of those groups. Uh, I'll, the link will be in the in a later slide. Um, but yeah, so uh, the way we do it is, um, is we'll, we'll do that evaluation, uh, give someone a score, and then assign them to that, to that, that level, that tier, bronze, silver, or gold. Um, and uh, that, yeah, so uh, applications will be able to choose what level of confidence uh, uh, they, they require. Some applications will insist on a strong guarantee of humanity, um, but they're going to be working with a smaller pool of of people who can qualify for that. Um, so some people, some applications will want a large pool of people to draw on, and they're not so uh, not so concerned that we um, strongly guarantee humanity as long as we do some filtering uh, to kick out the bots. Um, so that would be a bronze level. Um, with interrep groups, because interrep is managing those groups, if you join a group, that group can be used across multiple applications. Um, so you can join once and use it in many applications, and effectively you've got a sign-in that will be workable across multiple applications. And the advantage of doing that in a privacy setting is that we have a large privacy pool.
so the nitty-gritty process of, of joining a group, the user will come to a sign-on screen. Sometimes it'll be a step just before they go in to use the application. Sometimes it, will, um, it can be done well beforehand. Someone can join a group and then they'll keep their identity um, and use that to kind of log in to work with the application. Uh, so whichever way that's done, the first step is to prove the identity with the provider. Uh, that might be like Twitter OAuth or GitHub OAuth. Um, having done that, the, our application will do that assessment, assign the user to a tier, gold, silver, bronze, and then invite them to join that group. So the user will uh, do their Twitter sign on, say, okay, you're in Twitter gold, would you like to join this group? They click, click that button, and then the next step is they link that with an Ethereum account. Um, so the user will sign a message uh, with their Ethereum account, which guarantees that they own that Ethereum account. It also prevents that account from being used again, so they can only join once, and the Twitter account likewise can only join once. So having made that link, we, um, we, have, we uh, return a semaphore ID. The semaphore ID um, provides that guarantee that that Twitter handle is represented in that semaphore ID, and that can be used from there on in the application without revealing that link of who the actual Twitter user is behind that account. And neither is the Ethereum account revealed in the actual application because we're using semaphore IDs and it conceals that. Uh, we can also work with on-chain sources of uh, proof of humanity, if you like. Some of those are pretty, pretty strong um, guarantees of humanity. And I'm thinking there of like Solburn tokens or POAPs, like the POAP you get from your DevCon 6, uh, with your Dev DevCon 6 ticket. That can only be owned by a human, right? Because they're only giving out tickets for humans. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty good indication that that account has a human behind it. Uh, it's certainly very hard to, um, very resistant to civil attacks. Uh, so yeah, so we, we take a slightly diff different approach with on-chain groups uh, behind the scenes, but, um, but they end up as a semaphore ID and work the same way in your application. So the kind of applications we work with uh, that we have in mind for Interrep are uh, private voting. Uh, I talked a bit about this before. Um, yeah, membership of a uh, DAO, for instance, uh, and we can guarantee membership, guarantee that there's a human behind that um, uh, a human in that in that group, but never reveal who that human is. Uh, social networking, we think, is a promising way to apply this. Um, and some of our sister projects in Privacy and Scaling Group are um, working on this. You'll hear some talks in DevCon about that. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, Another place where privacy is important, but also humanity, proof of humanity is very important. Um, we have anti-spam applications like the rate limiting nullifier, another one of our sister projects. Um, we can do things like fair airdrops and civil resistant forces. So if you want to um, yeah, put some anti-civil properties into a an airdrop or a faucet, uh, Interrep can do that kind of thing. So uh, to close, we think um, a pragmatic approach to identity, building on our history that we, we all work on in our, in our existing 
digital lives, uh, taking a pragmatic approach to, to, to use that, bring it across to Ethereum. Um, we can build up, we have an existing source of identity that we can build on. We don't need to build it from the ground up. Uh, we don't need to discard those relationships we have in our social networks. Um, but we don't want to bring along the surveillance uh, opportunities, the opportunities for misuse and abuse, and we can build applications that respect personal privacy. Um, so our Ethereum accounts uh, can be used for more than just financial tra transactions, uh, we can start to extend it into the social realm, bring along our social relationships, um, give them a human context, and make our accounts more credibly human, and our applications in the Web3 world. Uh, so, the links, um, that QR code is to our Discord. You're welcome to come there and ask questions and find out more. You're also welcome to come and hit me up. I'll be hanging around a lot at the temporary autonomous zone down on the ground floor, um, which is the PSE's um, uh, little uh, hub. Um, you're welcome to visit the application, interrep.link, and you can sign on there, get, your, get yourself uh, signed up with a, a semaphore ID see what your Twitter status is. Maybe you have to work on that. Um, we've got documentation links. We've got our code open source. Um, you'll find all that on, the, um, on those links. But uh, yeah, please come to the Discord and ask questions if you, or come and ask me in person. Uh, so thanks for all that. Um, the QR code on this slide is the Discord for privacy and scaling. We do lots of cool um, applications in the zero knowledge space. So uh, you can join that Discord and ask questions. Check out our job openings if you like building cool applications for privacy and scaling and check that out. Um, and on that note, Thank you.